Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about how to deal with the plus C that shows up when you solve a separable differential equation, and I'm going to do a couple of examples. So uh, there's really two issues that people kind of run into, and the first one is where do we put plus C, um, and that one's actually easy to deal with. And the second issue is uh, when do we want to solve for C, and that's a little more complicated. So to answer the first one, uh, you're going to put the plus C on the side with the independent variable, and um, you'll see how to figure that out as we go. And for the second one, uh, it kind of depends. So uh, this one's a little trickier. You can actually do it at any point. There are just different times when it'll make your life a whole lot easier. So let's do some examples and you'll see. So the first example that we want to do is dy dx is equal to x times radical y. And we know that y of two is equal to four, which means when x is two, y is going to be equal to four. So first thing we want to do is just separate and integrate. So to separate, we need dy and y on the same side and dx and x on the same side. So what I'm going to do is kind of cross multiply. So dy over radical y is equal to x dx. And now what I want to do is integrate both sides. So sometimes I forget to put the integral sign in. I'm going to try not to do that in the video. Um, a lot of people find it easier uh, with radicals definitely change those into rational exponents. And if they're in the denominator, make them negative exponents. So I'm going to rewrite this. Uh, so it's the integral of y to the negative one half dy is, the is equal to the integral of x dx. So let's integrate both sides. So on the left hand side, y to the negative one half, I'm going to do plus one times the reciprocal. So add one to negative one half gives me um, positive one half and the reciprocal of that is two. So it's going to be two y to the one half is equal to the integral of x is one half x squared. So now I need to figure out where to put plus C. So I can put it on the left side or the right side. What I do is I go back to the original dy dx, look kind of in the denominator of that symbol, um, and I see the x is there. So x is the independent variable. So I'm gonna put plus C on that side. So plus C. Um, at this point, nothing. there's nothing too tricky. So I'm actually um, gonna look at it. I'm gonna solve for C right now. So you can solve for C whenever you want, like you could divide through by two if you wanted to, and then try to solve for C. I'm gonna do it right now because it's easy enough. So I'm replacing Y with four, and I'm replacing X with two. And now I just do some arithmetic and solve this kind of easy-ish equation. So square root of four is two, two times two is four. Um, two squared is four, and half of that is two, so I get four equals two plus C. Solve. So C is equal to two. Now I go back to um, that step where I decided I was gonna solve for C and replace C with what I found. So I have two Y to the one half is equal to one half X squared um, plus two. I need to divide by two because the solution to a differential equation is a function. So I need to solve for Y. So divide through by two, Y to the one half is one fourth X squared plus one. And then I need to square both sides to get y by itself. So y is equal to uh, the quantity 1 4th x squared plus 1 um, squared. So that's it for that problem. I could uh, do more on that, but I don't need to. That is a continuous function, so there's no issues uh, with it. So let's take a look at another example. So we have dy dx is um, the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity y minus 2. So for this, again, step one is going to be uh, separate the variable. So I got to get dy and all the y's on the same side, dx and all the x's on the same side. So again, it kind of feels like cross multiplying. It's, it's perfectly okay to think of it that way. So I get this. Um, I'm going to throw in the integral signs. And now the left hand one is a famous integral. Um, it's like one over u times d or one over u du. So that's going to be uh, the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 2 is equal to, and then I'm just integrating the right-hand side, so 1 half x squared plus x. I need a plus c at this point, so I go back and I look. x is there, so it's going to go plus c on that side with the x's. And uh, now what I want to do is I need to solve for c. So um, my advice is this. If you're going to need to exponentiate to solve for y, so y is currently inside a natural log, so I'm going to need to exponentiate to solve for y. Um, then do that before you solve for c. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. So uh, let me do this kind of step by step. 
and you'll see there's uh, you basically end up skipping almost all of this. So here's what we do. First, we're going to exponentiate. So we get the absolute value of y minus 2 is e to the 1 half x squared plus x plus c. So now what I'm going to do is kind of properties of exponents. So this can be rewritten as e to the c times e to the 1 half x squared plus x. But you look at that and you think it'd be uh, more convenient if I just called that e to the c a new constant. So really, I can rewrite this as, I'm going to call it c sub 1 because it's a different constant, but it's still an unknown constant. Um, but now I have these absolute values, and I need to take care of those. So the way that you typically take care of those is you think of it as y minus 2 is just plus or minus whatever's on the other side. So now we have this. But if you look at that, you have plus or minus c1, and you could easily consider that just a new constant. So I'm going to call that c2. And we get here. So in practice, what people usually do, this will always happen. So in practice, what people usually do is they think of this, and you go back to the original, and you just say from this step, the natural log of the absolute value of y minus 2 equals blah, blah, blah. Um, you just jump to this. y minus 2 is equal to c e to the 1 half x squared plus x. So I do that every time I solve this type of problem. Um, and it's never really an issue for me. And I definitely recommend that you do it as well. So from here, let's give some initial conditions. So let's say that y of 0 is 5. So I'm going to plug in 5 for y, and I'm going to plug in 0 for x, which gives me this. e to the 0 is 1. So I know that c is equal to 3. And if that's the case, then I know the solution to the differential equation is y equals 2 plus 3e e to the 1 half x squared plus x. Um, so by rewriting it the way that we wrote it, we avoid having to deal with that absolute value situation uh, because we already dealt with it. So let's take a look at a different initial condition. So maybe we have y of 0 is negative 2. Um, so the y value is negative. Um, so plug in. We get this again. So c in this case is negative 4. And if that's the case, our solution looks like y equals 2 minus 4 e to the 1 half x squared plus x. OK, uh, I'm going to take a look at another problem, which has some of its own uh, kind of issues. So dy dx is y cubed over the quantity x plus 2 squared. And we know that y of 2 is equal to negative 1. So when x is 2, y is going to be negative 1. That's not going to be an issue for a while, because first we have to separate and integrate. So to separate, we're going to go dy is y cubed, uh, dy over y cubed is equal to dx over the quantity x plus 2 squared. Throw in some integral signs. I'm going to rewrite everything with negative exponents because it's just a little easier to think about. So we got this. OK, um, so on the left hand side, I'm going to reverse the power rule. So that's plus 1 times the reciprocal. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. The reciprocal of that is negative 1 half. So I get negative 1 half y to the negative 2 is equal to, on this side, I'm going to reverse the power rule again. I'm technically doing u substitution, but u is x plus 2. So du is dx. So I don't have to balance anything out. So it's going to be plus 1 times the reciprocal. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So the reciprocal of that is just negative 1. So I get negative quantity x plus 2 to the negative first. I need a plus c at this point. So as soon as you're done integrating, you need plus c. Um, x is the independent variable, so it goes on that side. And now I'm going to, I guess I'm going to, to make my life easier, I'm going to multiply through by negative 2. So if I multiply through by negative 2, I get y to the negative second is equal to 2 quantity x plus 2 to the negative first. And I'm going to say plus c. But if you're uncomfortable with that, it's really a uh, negative 2 times our original c, which just created a new c, so you might call it c1, but I'm just going to call it plus c. I'm going to solve for this c at this point. So I know when x is 2, y is negative 1, so I'm replacing like this. A um, couple things going on here. So uh, negative 1 to the negative 2 is just 1 over negative 1 squared. So negative 1 squared is 1, so that's 1 is equal to. Uh, 2 plus 2 is 4, to the negative 1 is 1 fourth, so 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half plus c. So I actually get that c is 1 half. So I'm going to go back to uh, the step where I decided to solve for c and replace. So go back there, 
So I get y to the negative 2 is 2 to the quantity x plus 2 to the negative first plus 1 half. Okay, um, I need to solve for y because the solution should be a function. So I'm going to rewrite this to make life a little easier. Just make it a little clearer what's happening. Uh, I'm pretty much not going to mess with the right-hand side anymore. Uh, you could get a common denominator and things like that, but I'm not going to bother. And um, so I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. So far, so good. Um, now what I need to do is I need to take the square root, but there's kind of an issue that comes up. So if you look at the initial condition, um, it's y of 2 is negative 1. So the initial condition has a negative y value. And when I take the square root, so I'm going to solve for y, y squared equals, I'm going to solve for y, I get y is equal to plus or minus the square root. Since the initial condition is negative, I need y to be less than 0, which means I'm going to take the negative square root. So negative square root of this. So that's an issue that will come up, especially on multiple choice questions on the AP exam. Um, one of the first things you should do when you're looking at answer choices is uh, make sure the initial condition works. Usually you can eliminate like half the answer choices that way. Um, there's actually another issue. So the other issue is that if you look at the original differential equation, it's not continuous. Um, so either x can be less than negative 2 or x can be greater than negative 2. Um, and if you look at the initial condition we're given, uh, x is equal to 2. 2 is greater than negative 2, which means that we need to choose the domain that includes the initial condition because actually the solution needs to be a continuous function that contains the initial condition. So this is our final answer to this differential equation. It's kind of a challenging one. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just kind of summarize some things. So when to solve for c in these sorts of problems? Uh, you can do it whenever it's convenient, really. Just make sure you haven't made any mistakes up until that point. Um, however, you should definitely do it after you exponentiate, if you're going to need to exponentiate to solve for y. And there were a couple of other things that came up. One of them is, um, I think you should go back and review that part where I solve for c in the exponentiation thing. So when I had to exponentiate to solve for y, um, I did something kind of funny with c, but I showed all the steps, um, but I usually skip those. And then two other things. Check the initial condition is in the range of your solution. If it's not, go back and think about it a little more. And then finally, check that the function that you're getting is continuous on the domain that contains the initial condition. So those are the things you really need to think about at the final step. Um, okay, that's it. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.